Hello, my name is Asavri Galvi and I'm an architect from India. I'm co-authoring this research paper with Madi Tagadova and Tabitha Pope. The following research has been carried out as part of my study as a postgraduate student at the West School of Architecture at the Cardiff University. So let's talk about foodscaping to suburban housing. The ever-present need for housing and urban expansion encroaching on rural farmlands creates a hybrid image at the urban-rural interface. This map here visualizes an abstract idea of urban expansion as is observed at the city of Cardiff in Wales, UK, where these communities on the edge then lack a sense of belonging as they struggle to identify themselves with their environment, thereby lacking social cohesion. To solve this problem, we ask the question of how can foodscaping bring about social cohesion? We look at the image of suburbia now, which is fragmented with sparse development, sudden transitions and lacking interconnectivity. And we try to reimagine this very image using foodscaping. Identifying that imageability, which is the image of the city, foodscaping, which is the introduction of food into the landscapes and collective identity, which are the collective perceptions of its residents, then become these factors which hold the social cohesion together. We try to understand them at the design site. Imageability is the perception of the city as is experienced through its physical elements in the form of paths, edges, nodes, districts, and landmarks. To better understand this perception, let's look at the design site location. Located in the southwest suburbs of the city of Cardiff, Plastor is a housing development site included in the local development plan of the city of Cardiff. The intended site for study is comparatively small and sizes up to about 6.2 hectares. Now the existing site being uh, primarily farmlands and woodlands, we try to understand this image by, by looking at the immediate neighborhoods. And we see this place as having detached, terraced and apartment typo typologies well connected with paths and nodes, but having fragmented bounding edges with low density districts and also lacking a definite edge as a whole. Simply put, foodscaping is introduction of food into the landscapes and is classified into four main types of which the community foodscapes show up in the form of guerrilla farming, vertical farming, rooftop farming, urban farm shops, community gardens, greenhouses, and such, which are the most relevant to this research. Introducing foodscaping at the design site, we attempt to reduce food miles by making the food produce local in hopes of creating a self-sufficient food network at the neighborhood scale, which grows as a grow, sell, teach, and eat food network. At the architectural scale, within one of the clusters, we see this image come together as a co-housing apartment with green walls, rooftop gardens, integrated greenhouses, kitchen gardens, and wall planters. The fundamental approach to methodology is to research by design. We start with exploring broad ideas at the urban scale. Then we use the first literature to find a new urban paradigm. Investigate at the neighborhood scale to find a more specific research gap, which then leads to the second literature findings at the architectural scale. 
These findings are first analyzed with design to form the criteria for case studies. Again, using findings from these cases and theories, we find the necessary spatial parameters to reimagine suburbia. Now, reinterpreting this approach spatially, we find the concepts explored at each scale in the form of urban and urban form and imageability at the urban scale, house and street at the neighborhood scale, and exploring boundaries between the public and private spaces at the architectural scale. To begin at the broad scale, we find that the behavior of a place is the image of that place, and in turn determines the degree of social cohesion. The housing typologies produced by urban paradigms such as uh, the compact cities and, and urban sprawls have a indirect effect on the behavior of a place and a direct effect on the imageability. Microurbanism is a term that explores boundaries between public and private spaces by redefining the threshold conditions at a finer grain and that communal living provides the necessary platform to test these boundaries. We then achieve this hypothesis, which states, or which questions, would shape of a neighborhood then affect the degree of social cohesion? So using these theories, we come up with a new paradigm for a suburban neighborhood like taking principles from garden cities and perimeter housing and alternating the growing and housing spaces at the periphery. Having growing spaces as, as gardens uh, at the nodes and parts separating different typologies of districts. We further develop this uh, concept at the design site by adding more permaculture concepts to urban planning and coming coming up with five different clusters having different typologies with green belts on the periphery to come up with a concept strategy at the site we employ the communal foodscapes into the elements of imageability, that is the paths, nodes, districts, and landmarks to create a food network. But what happens at the city? Taking a step back, we imagine a polycentric city growing as a citywide food network with the new suburban neighborhood as suburban villages around these different centers where the suburban village then develops with a sense of place and foodscaping as its collective identity. Testing this concept at the city of Cardiff, we then have these urban and suburban areas being connected with the CPULs or the continuous productive urban landscapes connected to the city and the suburban villages. We then reflect on the findings so far and identify a research gap that leads to the basic principle or the core of this research. So far we know that social cohesion contributes to place identity, which builds upon the argument that the boundaries in between the space, that is the housing, and the place, that is the neighborhood, are important in defining the image and that foodscaping might be this medium which alters these boundaries to achieve a hierarchy of public to private spaces. With the second literature, we find that the in-between spaces or more, more so transitional spaces are important in defining the degree of interactions. We also find that while third places are those public spaces where you relax and make new acquaintances. Fourth places are the semi-public intermediate spaces inside the third places. 
adding to which we can then identify that third spaces are the thresholds where these transitions happen. Investigating the hierarchy of spaces at the design site of the cohousing cluster, where intermediate transition spaces then become the third spaces. As the activities defining that informal social space give it meaning, leading the user towards identifying the space as a place with this within this place, informal pockets of fourth place, sorry, the fourth space uh, are identified around the edges and props where the informal interactions are likely to happen. Identifying the attributes of third space third place as thresholds, nodes, paths, props, and edges, where thresholds are the intermediate interface between the inside and outside of the building. Nodes are the meeting points at do dominant spaces. Paths are the streets, walkways, the approach. Props are the spaces near activities like uh, seating. And edges are the enframement and backdrop to enclosure. It can be, it can then be said that the degree of social cohesion depends on the spatial attributes of the third and the fourth spaces. We then find that the mass space relationship, approach to and from a space, and the use of material, flat material within these elements can affect the degree of enclosure visual impact and spatial character of that place. The level from public to private is defined through the degrees of access by paths and streets, the level of interest through the edges that provide views, and as enclosure, and as agency, uh, and through agency, as nodes that behave as meeting points. With these theories in mind, we understand the nature of interaction within the boundaries of semi-public to semi-private. This reveals the surrounding spatial elements which should be paid attention to. We then test the design to find alternatives for possible interaction thresholds as a semi-private roof garden or a semi-public creating threshold spaces at the core or a stepped garden for more visual connectivity. To summarize these findings, the relationship between the house and the street depends on the spatial hierarchy. The threshold spaces determine how a space becomes a place. The degree of interaction at these thresholds forms the neighborhood image. Now, moving on to case studies, three suburban community cases were studied each with a different criteria. Ashley Vale uh, in Bristol, UK as a self-built housing neighborhood with a city farm, cafe and plot allotments in the vicinity. Central Wohn in Delft in Netherlands as a co-housing community with kitchen gardens and Agro Cité, Paris, France uh, as a community kitchen garden with cooking space. Of which Central Wohn in Delft is the most relevant to this design proposal, uh, where four different clusters of co-housing apartments are arranged around the growing spaces. We find that the most desired activity here happens around these growing spaces, which are visually connected to the cooking spaces 
or the communal spaces on the inside of the building. We also identify that the porous edges where you can glimpse into spaces then become uh, these four spaces. Now, using all the findings from the cases and the theories, we proceed to further testing the design by coming up with three different alternatives. We try to achieve accessibility to the green space through courtyard by designing boundaries through the physical, visual and spaces that create opportunity to interact. So if we enter through the courtyard on the first alternative, if we enter through the courtyard, the public space along the street then becomes the back of the building with less active facade. Then increasing the backyard garden in the second alternative. To increase the boundary and adding more windows but there is a lack of connectivity with the kitchen and the growing space. So then we flip the building in the third alternative and enter on the street front with the integrated greenhouse and the back of the house then opens into the courtyard with views from the communal kitchen or dining. Further analyzing the hierarchy of the spaces, foodscaping elements define the architectural fabric to create an active and cohesive space at the boundaries. Defining edges with the plant material brings out more possibilities for a porous enclosure and a legibility that can bring out the spatial hierarchy for the threshold spaces between the inside and the outside of the building. The courtyard then becomes a third space where edges, alcoves, props like seating and trees become the fourth space for opportune chance happenings. In conclusion, the spatial organization of the building affects the outdoor spaces, which defines the house and the street relationship and the neighborhood image that therefore comes with it. When designing residential buildings, it becomes as much important to look at the street and the community. A space thus becomes a place, depending on the nature and degree of the activities that give it meaning, how people use the domestic space and the degree of social interaction proves instrumental in the co cohesive functioning of the neighborhood and in turn the sense of that place. And while cohabitation, communal living, co-housing are all subtle variations for sharing the services and living an environmentally friendly life, they are indeed imbued with a sense of togetherness beyond the family. Which is not to say that all of suburbia should be a co-housing typology. However, taking certain attributes from the hierarchy of spaces from this typology could then perhaps result, result in more fluid residential models. Thank you.